Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and this is our little miniature animal barn that we're building. We're doing a chicken coop on one side, a goat barn in the other. Chickens are already pretty invested in the project. We've got two videos out on this already. One getting everything leveled up in concrete, the other getting to this point where we're at now. So if you want to see how we got to this point, check out the description. I'll put a link to both of those videos in there. As far as what we're doing today, we're starting off with that post and that post. Then we're going to move on to getting this ridge beam across here and hopefully start getting some rafters on. Get some tools uncovered. We'll get to work. Also, I just want to clarify, when I say miniature animal barn, I don't mean the animals are miniature. I mean the barn is, you guys understood that though, right? We all, we understood all of that. The kids are out playing today too. It's just a beautiful day. We haven't had this nice weather in a really, really long time. Low 60s, sunshine. We got maple syrup boiling up. We got a lot going on today. Perfect shot. Perfect shot. We're gonna want one of these. Okay. So up to these brackets, I ran a string line for everything to make sure it's all good and straight. And on these two brackets, for whatever reason, I just slapped them right in the center of the concrete post, assuming they'd be perfect. And I did not put a string on them. That's kind of a silly mistake. So we'll see what they look like. I hope they don't look bad though, do they? It's almost like I have my post laid out right, or my concrete laid out right. So that one's good on the string there. This one's pretty close. It's that way just a little bit, but we can just cheat the post that way. As long as we get the post on the string and the bracket's not at no man's land, we'll be okay. So I got some holes pre-drilled, measure back to the string. 74 and a quarter. 74 and a quarter. 74 and a quarter, that's handy. It's nice when your building lays out. Pre-cutting a two by six, it's gonna side nail right there and catch the side of the post. That way I don't have to try to hold awkward. I have my measurement predetermined and I'm holding back that inch and a half because that's notched into the post. Not worried about level yet we'll get that in a second right now I'm just worried about this distance okay start a screw Love it. Oh yeah. Nope. <laughs> That's not gonna work. <laughs> there we go. Happy little accidents. Okay. Up we go. Just looking, making sure I got all the tools I need sitting over here. Beautiful on the string. And we're just gonna pull to there. Now this may not be perfect, Obviously, we're going to want to string line the top for the ridge pole, but this is going to get it pretty close. Pretty close for us. <laughs> I 
Love it. Now we need some bracing this way, obviously. And that's gonna come, well, it's gonna come from the first, I was gonna say the ridge pole, but we're gonna put a separate one on first. Line, oh yeah, awesome. noise is necessary. So we've got all these posts up top notched and ready to receive a two by six. What we're gonna do, very similar to what we did on those other ones, we're gonna measure outside to inside, 114 and three quarter. And I'll put a mark. One fourteen and three quarter. Then we'll just cut this off. So that'll put, when I flush that to the outside of that post, it'll put the top of that post the same as it is on the bottom. That might not necessarily make it perfectly plumb, but our spacing will be identical. And then that way, whenever we do plumb it up, they should both be plumb. Just flushing up the outside here. I slide this over to my mark. Looks good. Now we do the other side. If they ever do like a carpentry Olympics, navigating the ladder should be one of the events. I mean, if it, it folds, you know, I guess that's a feature we could utilize. There's my mark right there. So we just slide the post over to it. That's it. Provided we can get it up there. Not breaking the screw. I don't give a lot of advice on this channel, but I will say if you ever drop something from up here like this, don't try to catch it. That's how you hurt yourself. Just let it go. It's just a board. You can pick it up off the ground. Awesome. That'll hold it for tonight. Chelsea and I are up here boiling off some maple syrup too. It's our first year trying to make our own maple syrup. Chelsea's up there getting it boiled off. If you want to check that out, hop over to her channel, Wild Roots. I'll put a link in the description. 
and check out our first attempts at making syrup. One of them worked out well, one of them didn't work out so well, but it was a learning experience. That's what I'm doing the rest of the evening. I'll meet you guys in the morning and we'll, we'll just keep, I mean, we're working. That's what we're doing. So it's the following morning. The next step is this board that goes right here to catch the rafters off of this. Listen, I fully apologize. I just don't have a good way to put you up there with me. I gotta let you listen to that AEP boat. Where's she at on screen? Right there. She's a big boat. She's loud. She's got a good sound. Man, she is pushing hard too. Okay, we got one more to notch and then we'll get those in there. Now you just, you wonder how you're going to do this sometimes. And then it just works out. Oh dear. Oh, she's tight. That's okay. Tight's fine. Yep. Oh. Luckily I got this hammer. Okay, I should get a real hammer. There's something satisfying about that. Yes, there is. <laughs> oh, that's a good feeling. It fits just so snug like that. Now you saw in that last one, I ran a full length from that way, this way, catching the splice. On this one, I'll run full length from left to right, catching the splice. That way it's, you know, opposing. All right, if you guys can grab that side for me. Thank you. You're so, you're just the most helpful. And slide that to my, <clears throat> to my mark. Oh yeah. I actually need to add an inch and a half to that because the power line. There we go. That'll give me 16 inch overhang. Okay. Beautiful. Now don't, don't leave the channel because we're getting too fancy, but I actually bought new hardware for this part. We're gonna put some bolts in here, bolt it all together. I know, I know, I've outdone myself.
washers. Where are you guys looking? We're working over here, man. All right, I'll let me get you. I'll get you. That'll work. Okay, so the next step, you see how we got these cross braces on the end here? That keeps everything tied together. So like if the wind's pushing on it, the wind pushes on it, it transfers that force down to the bottom. And that's why I got them going both ways. So if the wind pushes this way, it transfers that force down to the bottom. So it stiffens it up. Try to give that a shake. Hard as you can. See how it feels really solid from this direction? Because uh -huh. we got it braced. So the next thing we need to do. Now, same thing, right? We got these two posts. Oh, we well, come here and give this a shake. See if you can move that. Shake it hard. Oh, I can definitely yeah, see what I'm saying? So we got to put cross braces on that section, just like we have down there. We're going to use, we're going to take these two by fours down because those were temporary braces to hold those up while we were working. And we'll use those to make a cross brace. We're just going to do one right here because there's going to be a wall here to separate the chicken coop. So let's do that. Um, go look on the floorboard of the Subaru. And which row? Front passenger seat. Okay. Should be some safety glasses up there. Now, before we get it all tied off and secure, we want to make sure. You get the right one. Make sure she's sitting straight up and down. So use this to tell plumb. So see that bubble? Close. Yeah, it's close. It's Move. The biggest thing I'm worried about though is this post. Yeah, so they both need to do the same thing. They both need to come out just a little bit. Now we've got a lot of stuff tied to everything, so it's kind of hard to push. I may have to have you do some pretty hard pushes for me. Ready? You like it there? A little looser. I'm okay if it's a little tight because it'll probably come back just a little bit once we put the brace there. on. Mm -hmm. You like it there? Mm. Okay. All right, that'll work. <laughs> now you drop it. You can't drop her now. You gotta hold her where she's at. You got it? Okay, there I go. Now give that thing a real good shake and see if it feels any stronger. Yeah, definitely stronger. See the difference it made? Now look, look at this one. Well, that one should be stronger now too because it's all kind of tied together. Oh, yeah, but this seems to like shake so it's like. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like what about the so on these walls, we're using wood. Is that what you're asking? Sure, it could. You're tr you're right. And then the goats, it's just because the goats to die. Well, yeah. That's why we have doors. We just got to be real careful with with how we heat it. But yeah, you're right. That could happen. All right, good talk. I'll see you later. Oh, it's nice to not have those pieces there anymore, and then I don't have to bend anywhere. Yeah. So we've got this cross brace on here. We've got these here, which will be for the roof section right here. We'll do that here in a little bit. And then we've got that all cut to the length it needs to be with the doubled up two by six on top ready for rafters. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start putting some rafters up. We're gonna do this back section first because, well, it's gonna be the biggest headache and I just kind of want to get it done and out of the way. That way, the next section will be the easy one. Alright, so for this section I've got some 10 foot 2x6s just like this, and they're going to go just like that. Do 16. And 
and it is the same. That'll work great. Looks good. Let's see if we can actually catch it. One thing we've got to look at while we go down this is, see how it's got that bow in it right there? There's nothing holding it. Well, there's that little brace there that was temporary, but we'll take that off. So we'll run a string down here with all these cut the same. The measurement's the same from there to there as it is from here to here on this side. So we should be able to run a string line and with our cuts, pull that back wall straight where it needs to be. So I just got back from working for Mike this morning, but I got a few hours this evening. The rafters turned out good on this back side. I'll lay something up there later so you can see. They all plane pretty well though. The next step is obviously going to be the rafters on the front side. Got one more to do at the very end. It's not perfect, but for a building that's gonna house goats and chickens. I think it'll work just fine. I think it'll work just fine. I'll get that last one put on, then we'll start this run. By the way, I was wrong about this fly rafter again. That needs cut off. This needs to overhang. That needs cut off. Well, you know, we'll show you when it's all said and done. We make mistakes and that's okay. So these are going like that. We gotta cut the angle on this and then we'll let that run, whatever it runs on that end. Simple as that. There's a lot of ways to mark the angle or find the pitch of your roof, speed squares, bevel squares. Lots of great ways like that. A really simple way. So you just take a piece of wood, see I got sitting on the ladder. I bring that up to where it needs to be. And then I just trace it. And now I've got my angle to where that'll meet up with that. Let me get that one cut, make sure it works right. Then we'll get the rest up knocked out. Change my depth. So we're just going to double check that that angle fits on there right. And if it does, we'll get them all cut. Think that'll work? Let me get these cut, then we'll start getting them put up. Got a toenail screw into the top for now, then we'll come back from the back side and run some sturdier pieces in. So we've got all those up there. Remember, I just tacked that top corner with a little T25 three inch screw, but I have just enough of these. We'll run them in 
run them in from the back side into them. I think that'll do the trick. If a fella feels really luxurious, he might get some hangers for it, but I doubt it. Next, we're gonna chalk a line across there, cut our tails, cut the bottoms as well, and then we'll put the gutter board on. Something happened down there on that one. So I finally figured out why in my head this layout wasn't working out. We gotta redo something, but that's okay. See this? I should sit right here. My layout should go from there over, which means all of these are an inch and a half too far this way. And honestly, I don't even know if it's that big of a deal, but we're gonna fix it real fast. Cause they're, look, they're anxious. They're ready. They're anxious. All I'm gonna do is just make a mark and then just slide it over. Basically, they're just all on the wrong side of the line. All right, we've got that fixed. Got a screw right there holding it. We've got that end up. Doesn't look terrible. I don't know the best angle to show you there. Right here at the entrance, this gets gabled. These get cut out, and depending where this comes out, these will get cut as well. And it's just a headroom thing more than anything as we come in. This is just gonna be so nice for us. Okay, so all we're gonna do, 47 and a half, okay, 23 and three quarter. Now whatever we cut, just gonna sit on these double up doubled up pieces we made. So we're just gonna draw a line. And we're just gonna draw a line. And then I need, oh, I forgot something. I'll be right back. Measure down, or draw down, I guess. Not measure anything. And then, oops. <laughs> Should be able to line that up, line that up. This should be our top angle for where they'll come together.
cut it. It's just a work of art, man. It's a work of art. Ah, oh, machine. Just kidding. Just kidding. I wouldn't. Wouldn't do such a thing. Yeah, we're breaking things already. Uh huh. We'll definitely make some more headroom. Gonna need some of these. She's sunshiny today. I love it. Tape measure. What we got going on here? Heinz Corporation, big boat. They got big boats. What's on your hip there, young man? You guys wanna fly a boat real quick? It's been a while. So this boat going up river kind of caught my attention. There's a few things that we don't normally see in our area. One, a full 15 barge tow with liquid chemical. It's pretty unusual. Normally we see a four pack or a six pack. The other thing is this is two different tow boats tied together at the hip both of them under power, which is pretty unusual. The smaller one on the left belongs to Kirby. The one on the right, what really caught my attention, that is a brand new 2020, well, brand new in towboat terms, 2020 triple screw 6,600 horsepower towboat that belongs to Heinz Furlong. Now, they're supposed to build three of those ships, three of those towboats identical, so that'd be pretty cool. As we fly around this way, check out, look at the very head of the towboat, not the head of the tow itself, but the head of the towboat. The bow of the towboat, check out that piece of driftwood he's got stuck under. I thought that was pretty cool too. I'll fly around one more time, zoomed in a little bit closer. But that towboat was absolutely massive. It was just a pretty unusual tow. I don't really fly the towboats much anymore, but I kind of had to get a closer look at this one. While I was up around the deck, a fox came up in broad daylight and snagged one of our hens. It's doggo, Charlotte. She came down, heard all the commotion. She laid the smack down, laid the smack down on that fox. But we've never had one. We know we have a couple that live down here. We've seen them before at night on trail cams. We've never had one come up in broad daylight before like that. stay for sure. Oh yeah. Let's go right about there. Get my arm under it. Back that one out. Just let it fall. Fall. Beautiful. All right, so I need to cut this off because this is wrong. I put this up here to catch the flyer after. That's going to be where that catches into. So I got to cut it off real quick. In a super comfortable position. Yes, it would be easier to cut from this side, but you guys are on that side. You know, I'm trying to help you all out with camera angles. So we're just going to do an ugly cut here.
Same thing on the other side. Then we'll trim those up. It's like a, it's a hat no hat day. It's a very confusing time in Southern Indiana. Got the solid one and a half points of contact. Okay. Nice job, fellas. All right, let's cut these to length. I handed that to somebody. That end, and that end, trimmed. They look great. They're ready to receive the fly rafter. Let's get the gutter board on this side. This is the side I've been dreading the most. Let's get it knocked out. As far as the overhang on this back side, I don't really have a set distance for the overhang. I'm just kind of trimming them. I'm making them match on whatever side they're on. Honestly, the longer the overhang, the more protection my wood barn siding gets. So we're just going to measure in on this. Nope, we're going to measure out. Sorry. Whatever we want to measure out. I can get almost two feet of overhang on the back. I say we do that. See if we can chalk a line and get that all the way down. Now just give me a little bit more protection. Now, Feller, thank you. Hey, thank you. Okay. Oh no, that's fine. Looks like they all hit. We're just gonna. Oh, that, why? The tree. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, bud. Way to make things more complicated. Easy. No, don't. Oh, don't wrap her now. End up with a knot. No. Rat. Oh. Boom. If the amount of people that complain about bad audio just got together in a support group, they could probably hire a full-time production team for me. That way, they could complain about a more expensive production. Complainers are gonna complain. I'm just gonna work. I'm gonna do the same thing, let this one kind of hang wild and then trim it to length, but I'm gonna set a screw Just somewhere in there. So that way I know I at least have enough hanging past. I have enough I could trim off. Oh yeah. That'll just balance perfectly. We won't have any problems at all. There you go. Okay, fantastic. Beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful. So I'm gonna finish getting screws in this. And uh, yeah. God. Was that necessary to act like that? You'll just roll up on that. Hip. There we go. If that board doesn't break, there we go. Hold on just a second here, bud. There we go. Then we'll put some of those, some of these, we'll run those in.
that one fits a little nicer. That's a pretty good fit. Hit a screw, huh? So that's what that'll look like. I put a second board on the back, I'll show you that in a second. And when I get some more material, I'll do the same thing on this. That'll lock lock all this together. Look really well. Look really well. I don't know. That's a deep subject. It'll look really nice. I, I brought a little bit of siding over, and I just want to go ahead and start putting some up so I can kind of start to visualize this thing a little bit better. Let's let's do that. Now, everywhere there's a post, there's going to be two bolts run through. Just like we did on those, two bolts on each one. And I don't have that hardware right now. So what I'll do is I'll mark where a board goes. We'll set the board there and save it. And just kind of keep going across. That way I come back and add the second bolt on these. And we won't have to, I don't know, we won't have to finish that thought because I don't know what it was. Now, when this is all done, we're painting the whole thing white. Well wood staining the whole thing white. We'll use an exterior wood stain, whitish tint to do this. That's kind of what we're looking at when it's all said and done. And we got a lot of different tree species. That's why I mentioned that. And you can see exposed to the sun, not exposed to the sun, but a little bit of moisture and uh, nice and dry under the, uh, under the overhang. So that's why I'm mentioning that. You're gonna see some discoloration. When it's all said and done, we're going to come pressure wash all of it, stain it the whole nine yards, make her look really sharp. And all these little cutoff pieces, we'll save these. We'll have lots of uses for these once we get inside the barn for sure. Now, like I said, I got a bunch of these ring shank nails left over and that's what I'm going to use. I'm not saying I'm not going to regret this one day if I ever have to replace the boards but it's what I've got. Looks like a bar note, doesn't it? Changed my mind pretty quick on that. I'm gonna use these 16 penny nails instead. They're 16 penny coated sinkers. They'll be fine. 16 D, D stands for penny. Something about language transition, translation over the years. Somehow D stands for penny, I don't remember. Anyway, that's what I'm using. Nailed all the way across the top and the bottom. And I drew a line and I decided I'm gonna nail all the way down each cross brace too. This is going to be a strong barn. I want this thing to survive for some time. I think we're on the right path. Let's do a quick tour. So obviously this will be the entrance. We'll frame in up about here and we'll have a door. Inward swinging most likely so it doesn't interfere with any of the stuff we have going on here. You'll come in. This will also get walled across here on this side from this post to this post. Wall will be about halfway up, and you'll look over, and then imagine a wall halfway up. That'll be kind of the goat pen area. Right in here. This will be a sliding door that slides all the way open on that side. This will be a sliding door that slides all the way open on that side. And out that end, we'll take all the old chain link from the old chicken coop and make a big run on that end as well. And then this side over here, 
This will be the chicken coop area. Nesting boxes along this wall so we can access them from the outside to get the eggs. Watering and feed system somewhere in here. Probably some small shelves up here, like loft style, that we can throw some stuff up for storage. Probably a small little loft from that post to that post. So we can throw some stuff up there for storage. That type of thing. And then some shelves along this back wall for some feed storage. Chickens, goats, storage in a room for a little bit more if we ever decide to uh, expand on that. And I'm pretty excited about it. The next video after this will be working for Dirt Perfect. A couple videos coming out hauling some of that clay pipe. And yes, I broke some. And, you know, it is what it is. Nobody's surprised. And then the next video on this, which will be the third video from now, should be getting all the siding we have milled on. We've got some cross braces we have to do internally yet, going this direction. And hopefully soon, real soon, the ICF floor system comes in for the YouTube yacht. I'm really ready to get going on that thing again. My goal is that by the time we get all the siding done on this, and we're waiting for metal to come in for this, we'll have the ICF floor system so we can hop right from this right over to that. We're not sitting there waiting back and forth for material, you know what I mean? It's, it's just constant production and stuff's coming in while we're working on the other project. That's kind of the goal, that's what we're looking at. I'm gonna get the drone out and fly it around the rest of the way so you can kind of get some aerial views of what we're looking at. I appreciate you guys watching. I do mean that and you know that. I shouldn't even have to say that, you guys know that by now. I used this a little bit today too, worked great. Okay, bye now.